Hey everybody, today I want to talk about Paul McCartney's debut solo album titled simply McCartney. Uh, there's been a lot of talk uh, recently about the Beatles' Abbey Road album because of the 15th anniversary, and hopefully you've watched all of my videos on that. But I want to talk about Paul McCartney's first album, and this is the first uh, really collection of songs that he started working on right after the Beatles' Abbey Road album. And uh, famously, Paul recorded this most of this record at his home um, in London and also at uh, Abbey Road Studios. And Paul plays all the instruments on this album himself and has a couple of moments where Linda McCartney, his wife, provides backing vocals. But mostly this is just all Paul on this album. And uh, I want to talk about this specific pressing of the album. This is currently on my website, needlemeetsvinyl.com. And this is the best sounding McCartney I have ever heard. Um, this is a UK pressing, and it's a very early pressing from 1970. And I will show you what the record looks like. It is on, of course, the beautiful green Apple label. And there's the B-side with the cut open Apple. And this record is in fantastic, fantastic shape. Um, it really, really sounds good. There's just such a rich analog quality to this album, and especially this pressing. Um, and you can tell right away, when you listen to the very first track, uh, The Lovely Linda, which is just kind of like a little ditty that Paul recorded, um, the acoustic guitar on this pressing is just unbelievable. It sounds like you're right in the room with Paul while he's playing that acoustic guitar. Um, and it just sounds really, really, really nice. Um, and I'll show you some of the other McCartney albums that I have here that I actually um, used to decide that this was the best one. I have another UK um, pressing of the McCartney album, which is this one. This is a little bit of a later, um, a later pressing. I think this is like 1971, possibly. Uh, and this one that's on the website, it just beats it out by just a little bit. And the condition of the record is um, quite a bit better than this one as well. But these are both. Uh, UK pressings of the album. Then, of course, I have a bunch of um, a bunch of US pressings. This is a early um, US pressing of the McCartney album, and I think this is uh, pressed by Bell Sound. I believe that's what this one is. Let's see here if I can find where this opens up. Uh, oh no, this is a Sterling LH pressing. And this one sounds pretty good as well, uh, but it definitely does not sound as good as uh, the UK um, the UK pressings of McCartney. And uh, I think that's probably because um, the UK pressings, you know, they had the actual master tapes, um, the like the earliest generations you could get. And so that's how they pressed them directly from those. And of course in the US, they were given um, really good quality tapes, but they were, you know, not first generation tapes like the UK pressings were. And that's generally a rule that, um, and when I say generally, because there are exceptions, but generally, when you want to find the best pressing of an album, it usually makes sense that um, where the album was recorded, if it was pressed in the same country that it was recorded, it usually sounds excellent, just because the master tapes are so, uh, are so close to where it was it was pressed. And that's very, very important. So with McCartney, obviously, it was made in the UK. So UK pressings are tend to be uh, superior to the US ones. Um, this is another US pressing. And I think this is a little bit of a later one, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think this is a little bit of a different pressing here. And this is, where was this one pressed? This is another Sterling, Sterling LH, but this is um, a Scranton uh, pressing plant pressing of this one. And again, sounds it sounds really good, but it does not compare to the, um, the UK pressing that I have on the website. And I think the UK pressing, I'm trying to remember why the UK pressing is just so much better. And it's the usual reasons why. It's the bass, the bass is a lot more present uh, has a lot more warmth to the tone of the bass, uh, and just the overall clarity of the UK pressings are, are just top, top notch. Um, and then this is another US pressing, and I won't bother showing you uh, the actual record. 
Uh, but this is just a variation of a U.S. pressing. I think this is uh, from a different pressing plant. It might be from the um, uh, the Jacksonville plant. Could be. But I should also show this has an amazing gatefold with a bunch of great photos taken by Linda McCartney. And then, of course, the back cover is probably more famous than the actual front cover. And this is just that great photo of Paul and his daughter Mary taken by Linda. Uh, and then I also have one more, and this is a very this is the very first copy of McCartney I ever owned. This is in very very bad shape. This is a U.S. pressing, uh, and it's the very first one I ever had on vinyl. So uh, thought I'd show it just to show it because hey, why not? And then this one I will say this gets honorable mention. This is um, the McCartney album, obviously, because that's what we're talking about. And this is actually one that was pressed by Capitol Records in 1975. Paul McCartney um, had, he renewed his contract with Capitol Records in the U.S. And when he did that, the Capitol Records got, the, got permission to reissue some of his solo albums that were originally on the Apple Records label. And they released um, all his records on this. I'll show you the label here. On this specific capital uh, white and black label. And these pressings sound really good. If you're gonna get a US pressing of the McCartney album, this is the one to get. It sounds excellent. Uh, they did a really good job um, with, with the pressing of this. And I'm trying to think if this is a Wally pressing or not. I don't think it is actually. Oh, it is a Wally pressing. I just see it here on there. So yeah, this is a Wally, a Wally pressing. And as a lot of you probably know, I love the Wally pressings. He did a bunch of good uh, work on Beatles related uh, releases in like the 70s and the early 80s. And it just always sounds really good. So if you ever find one of these Capitol uh, pressings, it's worth picking up because they have excellent, excellent sound. Not as good uh, like I said, I, you know, I keep saying this probably like a broken record, but it's just the truth. It's not as good as this original UK pressing, which these tend to go for obviously a little bit more money than these US pressings. But um, still, this capital US one still sounds very, very good. So uh, this UK pressing, uh, first edition, well, first edition, I don't know, early UK pressing is what I'll call it. Uh, from 1970 is just phenomenal. So if you're looking to get the McCartney album and add it to your collection and you want to get the best sounding version you can, go to my website, neilamutesvinyl.com, pick this one up. Um, it'll go quickly because like I say, when all of my Beatle related um, records that I put on the website, they go so quickly. And uh, I feel so lucky that I have people that trust my judgment when it comes to Beatle records and records in general and uh, end up buying them and uh, really enjoying them. So I'm so happy that all of you are uh, going to the website, buying the records and uh, adding them to your collection because that's what it's all about. So um, yeah, and I guess I should just add that the McCartney album, um, you know, I think it gets a little bit of criticism and it's kind of one of Paul McCartney's forgotten albums, if, if that's possible. Um, but I think it's a very, very, very good album. Um, I think, as far as ranking it, I hate ranking the albums. It's it's a very difficult thing to do because Paul McCartney is just an amazing artist and he's put out so many great albums, so many different kind of albums. Um, but I would definitely rank the McCartney album in his top five solo albums that he's ever released. It's it's really, really, really good. So uh, go to neilamutsano.com, check this one out. It's on the website. And speaking of the website, um, I also just posted this this is another copy of Joni Mitchell's Blue album. There is another, um, I, I made a video, I don't know, probably like a month ago now, where I was talking about another pressing of this Joni Mitchell Blue album. Uh, and that record is also up on the website still. But this is another one that I just recently found. Very, very similar stampers to the one that's on the website already. But this one is in much, much better shape. Um, so this is a major upgrade. So right now there's two copies of Joni Mitchell's Blue up on my website, Um, And they're both different prices, but they both sound excellent. But as far as the condition goes, this one is the better uh, condition. So go check that out if you're looking to pick up a copy of Blue. Uh, just a classic, classic album by Joni Mitchell, obviously. So that'll be on the website. 
So check that out. And I will be soon posting these two records. Uh, Rush's album, um, what it's called, Moving Pictures, I believe is that what it's called? Yeah, Moving Pictures. And I'm not a big Rush fan, uh, but this record sounds really, really good. So if you're into Rush, you would really love that record. And then I also am going to post this Grand Mash album, Wild Tales. And uh, yeah, I guess that's it for uh, updates for now. So go to my website, needlemeetsvinyl.com. Check out this McCartney album, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye for now.